At long last, huh? At last. <laughs> Since September, we've been trying. Well, I've called the meeting to order if we could for the Comico County Council, February 16, 2016. Those who'd like to stand and join us in the Lord's Prayer and Pledge of Allegiance, please do. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory of our Amen. Amen. I pledge my allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Play <coughs> ball. Uh, before we get started, um, I would like to uh, entertain a moment, moment of silence, if I could, uh, for Chief Donald Records, uh, who spent 37 years in service to the uh, Salisbury Fire Department, passed away this past week, as well as uh, out of respect for the uh, two deputies in Hartford County who also lost their lives, if we could. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good morning, Council. I'd like to, if I could, uh, entertain a motion to approve the legislative minutes from February 2nd, 2016. So Second. Second. Any corrections? All those in favor of approving the minutes, say aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the work session minutes from February 2nd on the capital improvement uh, program. Sure. Second. Second. Any corrections? All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the open work session minutes from February 2nd in reference to land use and tier maps. So moved. Second. Second. Any corrections? Seeing none, all those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motions carried. Minutes are approved. Entertain a motion to approve the open work session minutes from February 2nd in, 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 in reference to the uh, opposition letter to Senate Bill 166. So moved. And if we have a motion to second. Any corrections? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Minutes are approved. <clears throat> Good morning, Mr. Kramer. How are you? Good morning, Mr. President, members of the County Council, and ladies and gentlemen. I'm fine. Thank you very much. Before we uh, begin the formal part of the agenda this morning, the first item for your uh, enjoyment, I'm, I'm sure, is a presentation by Dawn Mitchell Parks, who is. Uh, the person who has now been assigned to, uh, well, I'll let her say what it is, but it's, it's a recommendation that uh, came from a, uh, one of the, the munis audits recommending that the county have a person assigned full time to uh, make sure that uh, that system is uh, operating as it's supposed to and that all the checks and balances are being met. That's the, that's the lay uh, version. But the reason she's here today is to give you a demonstration of the new uh, citizen transparency portal in our Muni system and that, uh, that which is online. Uh, several months ago, the council approved additional funding for the finance department to purchase this uh, capability. And uh, it's up and running. And with no further ado, I'll ask uh, Mrs. Parks and Mr. Machichi, our director of IT, uh, to begin. Good morning. Good morning. Dawn, if you would, wouldn't mind, tell the council exactly what your new role is, because it's, it's, it's very important. 
My new role? Oh, in the finance, in the IT office, I am currently setting up training sessions and documentation for new employees as well as additional advanced training for employees that we have. I'm also working on establishing a record of every role and security item that all employees have access to our financial system. And there'll be other things that come along as we go. Great. Thank you. Okay. This morning I am here to introduce you to the Tyler Technology Citizen Transparency Module, better known as Open Checkbook. On our county website, there will be a link in this area to Open Checkbook, as well as a description and a link on the financial information periodic reports page. Once the link is selected, you will be transferred to the welcome page for the Citizen Transparency site. On the welcome page, you can see that we, are, we can filter by funds. We are automatically defaulting to the general fund since that's normally the fund that people would like express the most interest. If you hover over the graph, it shows you the current year as well as the revised budget and the expenditures to date as of the current refresh date. And you can see it always will tell you the last time that the data was refreshed. If we take a look at the spending by vendor, you can see as well, we can filter by whatever fund we would like to look at, fund type. We can also, we wanna look at a certain vendor. We can search on that vendor, select it. When you select the vendor, you can decide which year you would like to view. I'm going to change it to 15 since we have a full year. You can drill down and see what was paid and what department it was paid. We also have an option to export it to Excel, Word. Let me take a It's coming right up. This isn't on there now, but it will be. By the end of the day? By the end of the mm -hmm. day. Okay. I wanted to introduce it Great. and then. I appreciate that. So I'm now. That is why you can't find it right at the moment. Yes. <laughs> you can see that I have exported this into a Word document. You can also export the information into Excel and several other methods. If we look at the spending by governmental area, And again, it shows you the different governmental areas for Wicomico County. Gives you a graph based, and if you hover, it shows you their expenditures for current year and three years back. These are actuals. Select a government area. You again are given the option to filter by which fiscal year you would like to see. Change it. You're giving your total expenditures for the different categories, your salaries, benefits, operating capital. You're also shown the different departments that fall under that category. If you select a department, it then takes you to what vendors they paid from that department and you again can scroll down and see what was paid and when for what and as on all the pages, you can export it to Excel Word. If you want to go back, there's an option to back to the previous page. And we can go back to the main governmental page. So this will show any credit card purchases actually what they were, who they were paid to also? That is already out on the website on the financial information. No, this shows that a credit card payment was made to Bank of America. Okay. The Excel that's already on the website would give the more detail of the vendor. They call the periodic Under the periodic reports, yes. Those reports aren't going away. This is to enhance what we already have out there. Don, how often is this updated? Weekly. And is it tied in directly with Munis? Yes, it is. <coughs> we 
do a data export every Saturday, so we have all the checks that were cut for the previous week, and then Tyler refreshes the system within a couple days with that data export. Under our departmental, spending by department, you again have the different um, government areas that are available when you drill down on the governmental area. You have your different departments. And again, if you drill down on the department, you have what their highest vendors are and the vendors that were paid. As with all the website pages, you have the action option to export the data. We also, under the other reports, we have payroll and revenue information. Under the revenues, we have the current year budgeted, we have the actual, we also have the percents collected, as, long as, the pre as well as the previous year. And again, the data is as of the date at the bottom of the screen. I don't know if you can really see that, that date. Our last refresh date was on the 10th. Okay. You go into the spending by fund, you can see the different funds types we have. It also gives you an option if you're not sure what an agency fund is. It gives you a definition of each of the funds. If you drill down, you have the different, like under this for capital projects, we have airport capital and county funded. It shows you the current year budget, actual to date, as of the 10th, and three years actuals back. Do you have any questions or anything you'd like to see? <coughs> I do want to say that this is a starting point. And at any time, if we like to see something enhanced on it, we can do that. It's a work in progress. So if more information is liked, we can get that. How far back does it, are, are you entering documentation? Back to 2012? For what? For prior years as far as... This is three years. It goes back three years. 15, 14, 13. That's good. It goes back three years worth of data. Now, mm -hmm. um, as this continues into 16, 17, and 18, are you It'll remain? still be three years. Oh, okay, so it all, it's always a three year. It's okay. always the that three years. Okay. Now, on the periodic reports, mm -hmm. some of that information goes back as far as we've been on the system. Okay. So if you're looking for budget reports back to... I believe we went live on Civic mm -hmm. Plus 2011, 10 or 11. It goes back that far. Okay. okay. Right. Financial statements go back even further for there. Okay. So the information is available. Anyone else? Very good. Yeah. Okay. Looking forward to it. What time yeah. is it? This is, this is something I know has been discussed for a few years. We talked about it in the Charter Review Committee. Mm -hmm. um, uh, <coughs> Jim Collins and uh, Mardella Springs has brought, he brought this up <coughs> four years ago. And, so I'm going to come in the executive's office for finally uh, implementing this, and, and uh, <coughs> a lot of people will be very happy about it. So thank you for thank you for doing that. You're very welcome. There we go. And I'm going to set this up real quick for the next person. <coughs> thank you very much. Uh, we, can, we can continue, I think, Mr. Kramer. Thank you, Mr. President. Next item on your agenda is resolution number 22,016 at the request of the county executive, providing for the issuance and sale of Wicomico County, Maryland, in the amount of $900,000 designated water system improvement bond Morris Mill Project Series 2016A for the public purpose of reimbursing costs of the Morris Mill Urban Services District Water Project for the issuance and sale of the bond to the United States of America through the United States Department of Agriculture. I'm not going to read every word of every page, but that is the purpose of this resolution. Uh, the uh, agenda uh, shows that uh, Mr. Wilbur would be here. However, he telephoned and, and confirmed that uh, all of the numbers are accurate. The actual, the actual resolution itself was prepared by our bond council. Mr. Wilbur has reviewed it and confirms that it's accurate. Mrs. Harris has reviewed it and confirmed that it's accurate. So uh, uh, there was no real purpose for Mr. Wilbur to be physically present. 
Okay. I guess what you're saying is that the council has any questions. Ms. Harris can answer any questions, and I'm assuming Mr. Strasburg can answer any questions. Yeah. I believe between the two of them, they can answer any questions, and, and, and I will help as well. Okay. Uh, entertain a motion to accept resolution 20 2016. Second? Second. Okay. <coughs> Discussion. <coughs> so, is this for the, the water tower project? I mean, could we have a little explanation? Of what yes, if you. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Mr. Transfer. Good morning. Good morning. I know several members are new to council since this all occurred. So let me walk you through the funding. Um, the project in total is a six million dollar project. It was broken out into two phases. The first phase was the water tower itself. Uh, that was funded with a nine hundred thousand dollar loan, which you're looking at this morning, from USDA with a companion $1.5 million grant. Phase two is actually the distribution of the water lines throughout the affected neighborhood. That's a $1.1 million loan with a $1.5 million grant. Again, from the USDA, the county has funded $2 million in general obligation bonds for a $6 million total. In our original uh, proposal, uh, which was the subject of an October 14, 2013 public hearing and the passage by the County Council, we had an anticipated uh, a borrowing cost from USDA of 2.125%. Our actual borrowing cost is lower. It's 1.875% uh, for the two loans, the $2 million in USDA loans. <coughs> <coughs> now, now with so this is the water district that's being set up and this is this is paying for the infrastructure it's paying for the infrastructure and then yes. and the money that the district pays then the users of the district will pay for the operating cost and or or will it pay back some of this capital cost? it pays back part of the capital cost as well mark okay uh, I've got a I can provide you with a complete set of the proposal that was made <coughs> in 2013 it walks through um, the, the project cost, its segments, <coughs> scheduling of construction, and then how the investment is paid back over time. Council members have a copy of the PowerPoint presentation uh, that uh, was given at that time that should be on your tables this morning. <coughs> is it? Any other questions? <coughs> Seeing on all those in favor of resolution 20 2016 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. I swallowed some tea the wrong way. Entertain a motion to accept resolution 21 2016. <coughs> Second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor of resolution 21 2016 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Entertain Next. a motion. Next item yes, for your sir. consideration is resolution number 21, 2016. This Wait, sir, Mr. Kramer, we, we skipped you, so I apologize. We're on 22. What did you do, jump ahead? Yes, sir. I'm, I'm you're, you're quick. <laughs> resolution number 22, 2016. $2,000,000. Same project. Water tower and waste distribution system. Thank you. I entertain a motion to accept resolution 22, 2016. Sure. Second. Second. We have a second. Further discussion? <coughs> Seeing none. All those in favor of resolution 22, 2016, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Mr. Kramer. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Strasburg. Next item is resolution number 23, 2016, at the request of the county executive. Declaring that Fisher Architecture LLC, located at 524 Riverside Drive, is eligible to receive Enterprise Zone credits and benefits. Uh, you're familiar with these. I'll, I'll make it as brief as I can. Under the authority of, granted by the state of Maryland, Wicomico County, and the city of Salisbury, um, established an Enterprise Zone and any new businesses or, or existing businesses which expand 
and meet the criteria are eligible to apply for enterprise zone benefits. Fisher Architecture has spent in excess of $50,000 on the improvements of the property and have hired at least two new employees. Either of those would have uh, made them eligible for the enterprise zone uh, benefits, but uh, Fisher has has uh, met both of the criteria. In fact, their total improvements cost $175,000, so substantially more than is required. This has been approved also by the City of Salisbury, and yours is the final approval. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Entertain a motion to accept Resolution 23-2016. So second. We have a motion and second. Any questions for Council? <coughs> Seeing none. All those in favor of Resolution 23, 2016, say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Motions carried. Resolution passes. Resolution number 24, 2016, at the request of the county executive, to authorize the county to acquire an easement on 478.23 acres, more or less, within the Quantico Creek Rural Legacy Area from Quantico Limited Partnerships, LLC, the property being located on Nutter's Neck Road and designated as parcel 31 on tax map number 35. Lycomico County participates in a rural legacy program in an effort to preserve the natural resources in the Quantico Creek area. And since its inception in 2002, the Wicomico County Rural Legacy Program has been awarded over $7.2 million in grant funds from the Maryland Department of Natural Resources. <coughs> Now comes a new participant with this particular easement, that being the United States Navy, by way of the Navy's Readiness and Environmental Protection Integrated Program. It's a cool key tool to combat encroachment that may limit or restrict military training, testing, and operations. Though the Navy is partnering with the Maryland Department of Natural Resources to uh, provide the funding for the purchase of this entire easement, which is including administrative costs not to exceed $1,210,000. Now, is Mr. McKenzie here? Mr. Mr. Lennox, uh, if council members have any further questions about the purchase of the easement or the, the Quantico Creek Rural Legacy area. Mr. Lennox will answer your question. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Entertain a motion to accept Resolution 24, 2016. So moved. Second. Second. Morning, Mr. Lennox. How are you? <coughs> I couldn't make it today. Great. Good morning. Uh, Mr. McKenzie, unfortunately, He's not feeling well today, and I did speak with him by phone, so he, uh, <coughs> I suspect he's home watching right now, as a matter of fact. Well, if we could Skype with, with Mr. McKenzie, if you'd like to. <laughs> <laughs> I, will, uh, I will do my best to cover. This has been um, Frank's project since that date, I believe in 2002, that Mr. Kramer referred to, where the county has received uh, over $14 million on a program which is strictly voluntary and does not involve any county general revenue sources. On this particular property, this is, um, I believe, the second acquisition that the Navy has done, the first one involving um, rural legacy out in that, that area of the county. We're learning more and more about uh, Patuxent uh, Naval Base and the importance of protecting uh, the test range proximate to that and the uh, willingness of the federal government through the Navy uh, to partner with, with the state and in this case, ultimately, we're Comico County. Uh, they've agreed to split the purchase price 50-50. We have gone through extensive appraisals and reviews, both by Department of Natural Resources as well as from the Navy folks. And you might imagine they have extensive, um, sometimes bureaucratic regulations and steps that have to go through. Uh, we've gone through the review in terms of those appraisals on development potential as well as on the ecological value of the property. Uh, Kate Patton is here today with me, uh, who was involved and has been involved for quite some time in these negotiations and making sure that each of the uh, various points have been, have been hit. Uh, you have a full package before you, I believe, 
and uh, your support is recommended. Question. Yeah, I mean, I guess my question is, looking at the um, information from the Navy, it talks about how it wants to limit incompatible development in this area. And then you look at the map of Wicomico County, the entire western part of the county, I mean, pretty much all of District 2, for instance. Yes. So what does incompatible development mean there? I mean, they actually have, um, I, I've had a chance to sit through some of the uh, joint land use study presentations, and just as a sign of things to come, you will be receiving one of those presentations quite soon uh, on behalf of Patuxent and the regional study and analysis that they're putting together. Their interests go everywhere from um, windmills, and the windmill, you may remember uh, a couple of years ago, Somerset County had some extensive back and forth with their potential wind project and how that would impact. Uh, in that case, it's the height of the structures. And so you could conceivably get into the middle part of the county, and if we propose to put up a 600-foot, and I think that is the number, 600-foot windmill, they would look at that very closely. The closer you go to, um, to the Nanticoke, to the bay, the more concerned they are. Uh, they are not regulating us. They will ask us to cooperatively work with them on trying to uh, discourage intensive development out there. My understanding is that they do not want us to follow the Virginia Beach model, which has to do with extensive federal investment and then development immediately surrounding it, which then obviously opposes that federal investment. So um, they're going to be working with us, uh, I believe, over the next couple of years, and in this case, they're putting their money in place. To do that presentation, to do that preservation, it's not that they don't want any. They're looking, dealing with intensive development, and frankly, their interests do seem to match up fairly well with ours. Will they still be able to develop the three parcels that were on the property? Do you know? Yes. Okay. How many houses there right now? It says there's a, a, a farmhouse and two sh and sheds, two additional primary dwellings and accessory dwelling. Right. So that they keep that. They keep that there. But it also says that um, there are three lots included, Please. and their grandfather in each lot is afforded development potential. So it, it doesn't <coughs> eliminate the potential to, to still develop. Th they property. do have potential to develop. And as you know, we go back and forth with health department, zoning, and now the septic bill. And so those three grandfathered lots allow them to get the maximum of seven that you've, that you've heard about in other discussions. What we were particularly impressed about um, was the ability to reduce uh, 21 lots, residential lots, on a full build out. And that's where the um, concern that the Navy has, I think one of the incompatible uses would be the residential development project. Sorry. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't get her name. Kate Patton with Lower Shore Land Trust. We've been okay. partnering on this project with the county. Okay, hi. Hi. Uh, Jack, what um, exactly does this easement mean to Wicomico County? It means that um, at this point they would be selling their development rights on that. They allowed, they're allowed, of course, to keep the homes. They're allowed to farm the property and um, will not be coming to us with homes and roads that the county needs to serve. Right. Uh, it has some, some very high ecological value, as I know Kate can explain further, in terms of the forested buffer, you know, immediately adjacent uh, to some pretty high quality waterways. Mm -hmm. So that's nearly 500 acres that can be developed? That's correct. And what does the Navy plan on doing with it, as far as training? Has that been discussed? Mm -hmm. Um, their REPI program just looks, I think, at reducing the amount of residential <coughs> development and then other okay. incompatible uses so that their training programs and flyovers um, do not disturb or are not uh, infringed upon by a lot of complaints. Okay. So that's where I think the Maryland Department of Natural Resources and this federal program go hand in hand. Um, one primarily to reduce the impact from development and the other to protect <coughs> the natural resources. So the opportunity to leverage some of the state funding with federal funding um, is a good partnership that we've been able to tap into um, here. 
Okay. Uh, so I'll read. I'm done. Thank you. So under this, if there's, you know, any sort of residential development in this area, are we going to be getting pushback from the Navy then if we approve that? I mean, this goes all the way up to this, the west, you know, the western borders of the city of Salisbury. I mean, this is not, That's you know, this lot. is stuff that would be in, you know, tier two if we did the tier, you know, I mean, sure. this, is, this is places that are aimed for residential development. Mm -hmm. There will be considerable discussion taking place. I know that the folks from the Joint Land Use Study are starting a series of roadshows in March to talk about what their interests are and how they might dovetail with ours. The part about going into Salisbury really did have to do, and I've seen the, the circles in terms of the height, the potential height impacts on radar and, and other technologies that I'm sure they won't even talk about publicly. Uh, so they do have interests going back to the center of the county, approximately in Salisbury, dealing with height issues. They do not have unlimited funds. They will prioritize acquisitions on a voluntary basis, and that's where we are today. It's a high-quality piece of land worthy of protection. Any other questions? All right. Um, get back to where I was. Seeing none, all those in favor of Resolution 24, 2016, say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion is carried. Resolution passes. Thank you very Great. much. We appreciate your Thank support. you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next item for Council's consideration is <coughs> Resolution number 25, 2016, at the request of the Executive, approving the Capital Improvements Program for fiscal years 2017 through 2021. Entertain a motion to accept resolution 25, 2015. So moved. 16, I'm sorry. So moved. Second. Okay, discussion. Seeing none, all those in favor of resolution 25, 2016 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motions carried. Resolution passes. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I have for now. Thank you, Mr. Kramer. Mr. Roser? Thank you, Mr. President. With your permission, I will reserve my comments for later in the meeting. All right. Thank you very much. And Ms. Harris, I see no public uh, comments here, so we're good with you, I understand. At, that, at this time, we will now entertain uh, public comments. Anybody choosing to uh, make any public comments, uh, please come to the podium, please. State your name and address. Keep in mind, we are uh, requesting a three-minute time restriction uh, to give everyone a chance to express their similar concerns. Thank you. Time. Time yes. Did you mention that? Yes. Good morning, folks. I'm Good morning. Alan Hudson, a uh, poultry farmer from Worcester County, but I still feel the need to be here. Worcester, Wacomico, Somerset, all of us, we're all, we're all in the same boat, I guess. We're all together. No need to separate counties. But um, I know you all got a lot, of, a lot on your plate with these new poultry houses and everything coming together. But... Um, the poultry industry is really the backbone of the lower shore so we really need that I know we need have some new ones coming about and a lot of the new ones some people might say they're big but they and they probably are but there's going to be other ones that are going to go out of business too and some of these groups that are putting this together food and water watch as state coast keeper and water keepers pretty much are all the same group just a different bunch of people just trying to change their names because well, most of you, hopefully you've heard of my name. Well, I really not hopefully, but I'm pretty sure you have heard of my name. I was the subject of a lawsuit against poultry farms. These groups put together and they tried to uh, get rid of the poultry industry through pollution. It took them three years to prove that they could not do that because nothing, there was no issues according to the poultry. But um, I think the main thing is just taking with a grain of salt where you're getting your information from. Uh, I brought some of the stuff from the lawsuit, a couple things that I just wanted to point out to you guys. Number one, here's one of my legal bills. I just grabbed one out of the drawer. I got a whole drawer in there. This one is for June 10th, 2011. The final amount is $114,543 for that month. These folks, they thought they were going to bankrupt me, which they near about did. My original lawyer, that's what he told me to do. And it just wasn't in me to back down. I didn't think I was wrong, so I couldn't do it. And 
that's the main reason why I'm here today. I think, well, agriculture is in your blood, and it's just something that we do. We do. Everybody gets up in the morning to do the best they can, and we uh, really just we need agriculture, and that's one thing that we need to do. And also, the lawsuit is it could all have been handled differently. All they had to do was come to me and talk to me. To this day, Miss Phillips has never looked me in the eye, never come spoke to me. She could have knocked on my door. I'd have talked to her the first time, second time maybe not, but the first time I would have talked to her, tried to explain it to her, but that's not the way we do business. I know that's not how I do business. I mean, if I have a problem with Mr. Joe, if I say, hey, your dog took a dump in my yard, I'm going to come <laughs> and tell you I don't like it, but I mean, and then we'll try to work it out, but you just, there's ways to do things, and it's just how things need to work, and that's not the way they do business. Uh, this here is my deposition. It took me 10 days, all right, 10 hours, one day. 500 some pages. They asked some of the dumbest questions that you could ever imagine. The court reporter lady, she said, this is the longest deposition I've ever been in for a federal case. She said, this is ridiculous. After the whole fact. Um, I guess I'll leave you all with this. One thing the judge said, I printed it out on his facts of finding. I'll read it to you if I can see the little writing. Judge Nickerson, while on the witness stand, Ms. Phillips tried to distance herself from statements made elsewhere by other <coughs> spokespersons of the waterkeeper. It appears to the court from her testimony the overall, and the overall course of this litigation that the waterkeeper has a goal of using the Clean Water Act to force poultry integrators like Purdue to seriously alter, if not abandon, their operations on the eastern shore. The court also observed in her testimony and her conduct a certain ends justifies the means approach where the truth can be spun to deceive to achieve a desired goal. So right there, if, if I'm in business, somebody was working for me and a federal judge said that to them, they would be dismissed because I don't want anybody working for me that's not honest and not gonna do things the right way. If I was wrong, that's one thing. That's the way things I should have been, and I would have admitted it if I was wrong, but just be careful when you're considering the whole poultry house thing. DPI has a great <coughs> set of good neighbor practices and everything so just take your time and do your due diligence and all this and really think about who you're getting your information from thank you mr hudson yep. thank you thank you for your time thank, thank you. you any other public comments seeing none uh council comments yes Mr. Hudson, thank you for coming, and I thank everyone else for coming this morning. Um, as Mr. Cannon mentioned earlier last week, Alfred County lost two deputies. And around the same time, I believe there was eight police officers shot and uh, most of them killed. I mentioned this over and over again. We need to support our police officers. We need to teach our children to respect and support police officers. We can't have a good society without police officers. The law is running amok, and we need to support our police officers, whether they're local, county, or state. Please support them. And uh, I think um, several of our county reps are going to uh, be present at the one of the funerals tomorrow, and I thank them for being present. So thank you. Thank you, Councilman Dodd. Any other council comments? Okay, seeing none, entertain a motion to adjourn so that we can go into open work sessions. So moved. Followed by a closed work session. So moved. Second. All Second. those in favor? Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Meetings adjourned. Well, now we'll, uh, I don't think we need a, re a recess. Uh, first item on the agenda for the open work session.